Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to review an album from a band that I haven't reviewed on my channel so far, and it's from Genesis, and this is my favourite Genesis album, always has been, Trick of the Tail. Uh, it was the first album they made after Peter Gabriel had left. I know Genesis fans out there, they all have their favourites, and quite often they don't agree. A lot of people think Lamb Lies Down on the Broadway is their best. Some people think Selling England by the Pound. Other people think Foxtrot. And I've heard people obviously choose this album and Wind and Wuthering. Uh, what I will say is I, I've got quite a few of their 70s albums. I've kind of been picking them up whenever I see a good copy. And I'm not as fully into those albums that I have in my collection. And I've got Selling in England by the Pound, Lamb Lies Down, Wind and Wuthering, Duke. Then there were three on vinyl. Uh, but I've never been into the albums as much as I'm into this one. And um, this was recorded in the fall of 75 and came out in February of 76. Got to number three in the UK, only got to number 31 in the US. Uh, and Phil Collins, uh, they, they auditioned a lot of people to take over the lead vocalist role. But they ended up choosing Phil Collins because he had a go at the song Squonk and the band was so impressed they asked him to record the vocals for the rest of the album and I think he sings really well. Phil Collins has got a good voice. I think his work with Genesis is pretty outstanding in the 70s. Um, in the 80s they got a bit too commercial for my liking and Phil Collins' solo career even more so um, apart from In the Air Tonight which I think thought was outstanding. A um, couple of things to say about the production. David Henschel is producing this album and he went on to produce every album up until Duke after this and he's an interesting guy because he played some of the keyboard work on Goodbye Yellow Bit Road I seem to remember, Elton John and he recorded that album of covers of Ringo's album called Startling Music um, where Phil Collins guested on that album actually it's an instrumental version of the Ringo album um, so he w became an integral part of um, the production team of Genesis and a lot of people commented that the production is really good on this album um, and I agree uh, I think uh, they, they showed that they could do a good album without Peter Gabriel they basically had something to prove I, I like the gatefold by the way designed by Hypnosis although the the cover, the actual design is by, does it say, who the drawing is by, I can't see. Um, anyway, so they're down to a foursome, Mike Rutherford um, playing bass, Tony Banks on keyboards, Phil Collins on drums and vocals, and Steve Hackett on guitar, who would remain through the following album as well before quitting. Um, I also want to say an interesting comparison between Genesis and Pink Floyd. I remember reading... Uh, an interview with Nick Mason in 1988 or around then and comparing how harmo relatively harmonious the Genesis departure of Gabriel and them carrying on without him had been and I think I would agree most from what I can see that it was quite amicable and they respected each other's work I think Gabriel came into the studio during the recording of Trick of the Tail and was very complimentary about it um, although I did see a documentary quite a few years later where all five of them were reunited um, and there seemed to be a bit of tension I think it was between Banks and Gabriel but I, c I can't remember exactly what but on the whole Nick Mason was saying that they, they make Pink Floyd look, look like, like a bunch of squabbling kids because the way they approached it was quite mature and they just Peter Gabriel went off and did his successful solo career and Genesis continued without them and without him and uh, and did very well as well so interesting I thought that was um, when they went on tour to promote this album Phil Collins couldn't do the drums and sing so he decided to get Bill Bruford to drum on that tour and Phil Collins mainly just did vocals um, anyway to the album uh, I think previous Genesis albums had credited the songs to the whole band, but here you 
you are told exactly who co-wrote each track and it starts off very strongly with Dance on a vol Volcano with this very um, distinctive riff going through the song and that, that was actually written by the whole band and then Entangled is a lovely song to follow it written by Hackett and Banks. Squonk is the one as I mentioned earlier written by Rutherford and Banks. Uh, one review I was reading said this sounded a bit like Led Zeppelin um, but then another review said it reminded him or her of 80s Genesis. Um, I don't know, it's quite a heavy song, so in that respect it's a bit similar to Zeppelin, but um, it's quite distinctively Genesis as well. I think it's a really, really good song, and Phil Collins sings it well. Mad Mad Moon is a lovely song to end side one, written by um, Tony Banks on his own. And then you've got a very amusing song, Robbery, Assault and Battery, where um, Phil Collins is doing this, all these voices a bit in the same way that Peter Gabriel used to do on some of the songs earlier. Um, I think this is a really strong opener to side two and Ripples is possibly my favourite track on the whole album. I think it's, and it was written by uh, Rutherford and Banks, Robbery, Assault and Battery, written by Banks and Collins. Just wonderful keyboard work from Tony Banks. Um, just the way he builds up the instrumental section before the final chorus comes in, sail away, sail away, sail away, away, ripples never come back. I uh, just think it's absolutely gorgeous, this song. And Trick of the Tail, written by Banks, is a nice, jovial, light-hearted song. Um, quite difficult to read the lyrics here because it's written in this kind of weird writing, but nice. Um, by the way, I'll show you the label. It's on the Charisma label there. Uh, so Trick of the Tale is a nice um, light-hearted song, penultimate, and then ends with Los Endos, which is an instrumental song written by the whole band again, and a strong closer. So, as I said, I, I, I think they had pretty strong moments after this album. I particularly like the single Follow You, Follow Me from Then With Three. I like Misunderstanding um, and Turn It On Again from Duke and Mama. And uh, that's all from the self-titled album. But things like Invisible Touch, I, I just think a little bit too commercial. But here, back in the 70s, mid-70s, at the top of their game, in my opinion, I know you Genesis fans will all have your favourites, but this was mine. And so that was my take on Trick of the Tale. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.